Welcome to this week's TurboSmart video drop on all things boost. In today's video, we're going to take the 10,000 foot view of forced induction engines. We're going to look at the two most common methods of forced induction, that is turbochargers and superchargers. We'll also explore the concept of boost control and look at each of the critical components required for achieving precise boost control on a high performance forced induction engine. So let's dive right in. To understand how high performance forced induction engines work, let's first start with the basics. Both turbochargers and superchargers are designed to increase an engine's power by forcing more air into the engine's combustion chamber. More air means more fuel can be delivered, resulting in greater horsepower and performance. Turbochargers harness the energy from the engine's exhaust gas to drive a turbine wheel, which in turn drives the compressor wheel. This compressor forces air into the engine's intake manifold, increasing the intake air pressure and therefore air density. Whenever we have pressure in the intake that's greater than the pressure in the atmosphere, we call that boost. So more air pressure or boost means more oxygen and more oxygen means more power. And of course, more power equals more burnouts. Superchargers, similar to turbochargers, also use a compressor wheel to pressurize air going into the engine to create boost. And how they achieve this pressure is quite different. Superchargers have their compressor being driven directly by the engine, typically via a belt connected to the crankshaft. So, on the one hand, both turbochargers and superchargers are similar in that they both allow your engine to create more horsepower by pressurizing the air going into the intake. But how they create that boost pressure is very different. Turbochargers use exhaust gases, which are essentially wasted energy, to turn the compressor wheel, while superchargers utilize the engine's mechanical power directly to turn the compressor. So, now that we've got an idea of what boost is, we really should delve into the concept of boost control. So boost controls are a crucial aspect of maximizing the performance of any forced induction engine. And it refers to the ability to regulate and adjust the amount of boost pressure generated by the turbo or the supercharger that goes into the engine. If we don't do any form of boost control, we'd have all the boost all the time. And while that might sound like a good time, it often leads to, let's just call it early engine expiration. Looking at our turbo again, and it's pretty clear that the more exhaust gas that you pass through the turbo, the faster the thing's going to spin. The faster it spins, the more air this compressor here shoves into the intake manifold. Now, of course, there's limits to this. Things like the physical size of the exhaust housing will limit how much total air can pass through it. The same on the intake side of things with the compressor housing. But for today's discussion, the important takeaway is that the faster the turbo spins, the more boost it's going to produce. So if you want to control the amount of boost pressure created on the intake manifold side of the turbocharger, then we need to get some control over the speed at which the turbo spins. And in steps, this guy. This is a wastegate. And its job is to regulate the flow of some of the exhaust gases around the turbine wheel. This controls the speed at which the turbine spins and therefore the amount of boost generated on the compressor side of things. Wastegates come in all shapes and sizes, but typically you'll find smaller turbos have what we call an internal wastegate, where the wastegate itself is cast into the turbocharger exhaust housing, and bigger turbos will have an external wastegate, where the wastegate gets welded onto the exhaust manifold. Larger turbos normally rely on external wastegates. These are completely separate valves that get welded onto the exhaust manifold and are often capable of flowing much more air than an internal wastegate giving the external wastegate the potential to deliver a much wider range of boost control. Wastegates are an entire technical video of their own that we will actually cover in the not too distant future, which probably makes it a good time for you guys now to hit pause and ring the bell right here on YouTube and subscribe to the channel so that you can receive all the updates from us when we're dropping new videos to the tube. Now, where was I? That's right, boost control. On supercharged engines, because we're not using exhaust gases to spin the compressor, but rather we're using a belt driven from the crankshaft to turn the compressor when we want to increase boost, i.e. we want to spin the compressor faster for any given RPM, then to change the boost, we actually have to change the drive ratio between the crankshaft and the supercharger pulley, which is why when we put on a smaller pulley on a supercharger, we get more boost. On the other side of things, if we want to reduce the boost output from a supercharger, then we increase the size of the pulley at the supercharger. Now, of course, 
The real challenge here is when you want to do something a little more challenging than just more or less total boost, like perhaps vary the boost by speed or gear, or even just have two different boost levels, one for everyday driving and one for those more spirited adventures. I mean, it's not exactly practical to just pop the bonnet and do a quick pulley swap when some rice burning import wants to chop you at the lights now, is it? So on a supercharged engine, if we want to reduce the boost at the flick of a switch, rather than slow down the compressor wheel, we'll bleed air pressure off from the intake manifold itself before it enters the combustion chamber. We do this with the use of an air bypass valve. This bypass valve redirects excess pressurized air, or excess boost, back into the air box prior to the supercharger, preventing overpressurization of the intake manifold and ensuring control over the final boost level. Now, I know what you're thinking. This bypass valve thing, it sounds like a pretty cool idea. Why don't we use the same style of device on a turbocharger to control boost? And the answer to that question is, well, sometimes we do. If you look at some of the modern race engines, this is exactly what's happening. The wastegate on the exhaust has been removed and an air bypass valve has been added to the intake for boost control. But this style of boost control is not without its compromises. The most obvious of which is depending on the physical size of the turbo housing, the turbo can quickly become a choke point for engine airflow. There's actually a lot more to unpack here in relation to turbocharger sizing, exhaust flow rates, choke points, and compressor maps and that sort of thing. But for now, I'm gonna leave it here and just say that typically boost control on a turbocharged engine is achieved through bypassing exhaust gases around the turbo through the use of a wastegate, which is very different from boost control used on superchargers, where boost is controlled by the size of the pulley on the supercharger and then a bypass valve on the intake manifold that releases some of the boost pressure to atmosphere or back to the inbox. So now we have a bit of an understanding about how boost is created and how a wastegate or a bypass valve can reduce the amount of boost in the intake manifold, we probably should talk about the actual devices we use to tell the wastegate or the bypass valve when to open and how much air to bleed off. These devices, not surprisingly, are called boost controllers. And they come in many shapes and sizes, from simple mechanical bleed taps to complex computerized controlled electronic systems. Your boost control system, depending on its level of complexity, can allow you to set multiple levels of target boost on any number of parameters, but most commonly we'll use things like boost by engine speed or road speed, or maybe we'll do it by gear or even elapsed time during a race. The point here is achieving precise boost control is crucial for extracting maximum performance for a forced induction engine. It allows for fine tuning of the horsepower delivery it optimizes responsiveness and it ensures that the engine operates within its own safe limits. So now that you've got your head around the basics a little bit, I'm going to introduce one of the very first products that TurboSmart was made famous for, the humble blow-off valve. So today, both turbocharged and supercharged engines utilize blow-off valves. So what is a blow-off valve and why is it required? So when the throttle is snapped closed on a forced induction engine, there's still positive pressure in the intake piping. Because the turbocharger or the supercharger is still spinning, therefore it's still continuing to produce that positive pressure. But because the throttle is closed, that pressure has nowhere to go, and it eventually finds the path of least resistance, which more often than not is right back along the path it came in, through the compressor housing. This phenomenon is called compressor surge, and you've all probably heard of it. Compressor surge is another one of those topics where there's a lot of rumors and things that bounce around the internet. And so for that reason, we'll actually do a video specifically on compressor surge very shortly. So stay tuned for that one. But today, we've covered the basics of forced induction. We've got turbochargers that use exhaust gas to turn the compressor to make boost. And we have superchargers that use a belt to drive a compressor from the crankshaft to make boost. We can vary boost output by redirecting either exhaust flow or venting off air from the intake. We have boost controllers that allow us to have precision and variability to the desired boost level across a number of engine or vehicle variables, things like road speed or gear. And whether you prefer the raw power and surge of a turbocharger or the immediate response and linear power delivery of a supercharger, both forced induction methods have their unique place and their unique advantages and disadvantages in the market. 
What remains constant, however, is the importance of precise boost control to unlock the true potential of a high-performance forced induction engine. Now, I'm fully aware that this video has barely even touched the surface of everything that you wanted to know about boost and how to control it, which is okay, because this video is only ever meant to be the beginning. Over the coming weeks, we're going to be releasing a whole series of tech videos on everything boost related, and we're going to dive deep into each of the topics that I touched on today. So please make sure you ring the bell here on YouTube to get all of the latest video updates from TurboSmart. Also, don't forget to follow our social media platforms at TurboSmartHQ. And if you've not already done so, head over to our website, TurboSmart.com, and sign up to our monthly newsletter for all the latest product updates. I'll see you next time.